Good evening, hello, and welcome to Stream of Blood and tonight's uh, presentation of our ongoing Vampire the Masquerade 5th Edition Chronicle, Vampires of Pittsburgh. I am, of course, your storyteller, Jared Logan, and we're so proud uh, to present this uh, game to you tonight and to have you here at our new time. We are now Sundays at 6 p.m. Uh, Pacific, and... Uh, it's great. The reason that we we had to move it a little bit is because people are going back to work. Yes! The long quarantine has finally ended. Is COVID cured? Yeah, no, but we're all going back to work and we're learning to live with it. And soon we'll have vaccines and uh, we'll have a different president. I'm getting political now. Everything is going to be coming up roses in 2021, you guys. For us here in reality, in Pittsburgh... In the world of darkness where the vampires live, shit is only going to get more fraught and filled with gothic drama. Um, before we get into our game tonight, I am going to uh, do a little top of the show business. Guys, here at Stream of Blood, our subscriptions are live. You can now subscribe through Twitch to Stream of Blood. Um, your contribution through Twitch will uh, help us uh, pay for some of the costs of the stream. Uh, pay artists and uh, the people that help us uh, make uh, this stream possible. But uh, you get something out of it too. You don't just get to watch a stream, which you could watch even if you didn't subscribe. You get emotes. We're going to have uh, some new emotes uh, that are uh, just about to be approved by Twitch. As soon as they're approved, uh, our subscribers, uh, of, of whom we already have dozens, uh, will have access to them. So uh, we have a hashtag get pink. Yes, our uh, our catchphrase that I think was coined by our friend Ashley Birch, I think. Uh, and then uh, the Neptune Society, our Call of Cthulhu game, of course, has Cool Thulu and Skull Thulu. Uh, those designs are by the incredible artist Will Potorf. Um, and, you know, I, I, Skull Thulu, I, I feel like he works for either stream, really. You could watch uh, Vampires and put up a Skull Thulu. Uh, when something looks particularly dire f for our uh, for our vamps. Um, anyway, you'll have access to those right away if you subscribe to Stream of Blood. But we're going to do more. Uh, we're going to do more right away. We, we've been in meetings. We've been talking about games for subscribers, special streams that are just for subscribers. And we'll be announcing those soon. So be sure to uh, subscribe, uh, and you'll help us uh, keep doing what we've been doing. Um what else can I say? Well, I do want to say uh, that it's been a terrible news week, as usual. I guess we're all getting used to it at this point. Um, RBG died, Ruth Bader Ginsburg, and uh, it's very sad and it's very discouraging. And you might see a lot of news that's very discouraging. And maybe this isn't the place to do this, but I just want to say, like, you know, the thing that makes it better is, uh, you know, caring for the people around you, caring for your friends, caring for people in your community and voting. That's going to be, that's going to make all of us feel better. Go into the booth and vote for who you believe in and tell your friends and family to vote too. Don't let people not vote. Uh, shame them about it if they don't do it. Yeah. Okay. Shame. That's probably wrong. But my point is please vote and, uh, and please make your voice heard because it's the only way uh, to make yourself feel better and to hopefully uh, make the world a better place. Okay, uh, I think it's time to bring in our incredible cast uh, because we have a full plate of show for you tonight. Um, it's an interesting mission tonight. It's a, it's a sort of left of center kind of scenario tonight uh, based on what our vamps chose in their last session where they, they, they were in sort of like a kind of a, a background planning phase. They were deciding on their next mission. They were deciding on how they wanted to forward the Anarch cause uh, tonight. And they made a decision, and I'm really interested to see what happens. Um, let's bring in the people that made that decision. Um, she is an incredible actress. She's an incredible improviser. She's funny. She plays Jen Brown, a thin blood vampire, uh, uh, formerly a tech CEO, now the leader of an anarch movement in Pittsburgh. Uh, please welcome our good friend, Ashley Birch, everybody. Hello. Hi, how's it going? Good. I just noticed for the first time that Will Potorf gave Jen a gun in that uh, image, which I appreciate because she is so useless. 
<laughs> it makes her look very in a fight. It makes her look very cool. So thanks, Will. I think she has held a gun a couple She's times. She's held a gun. Has, has she, she ever done anything with it? I don't has she ever so. hit anything? No. I think the last time I tried to use a gun was when we were fighting the bikers. I tried to intimidate someone out of making a phone call and they just went <laughs> and kept making yeah. it. <laughs> I kind of like that. I kind of like that she's bad with a gun or any I sort of too. weapon. Yeah, uh, you know, weapons. Like I don't know why we all. I guess it's from action movies. We think that's how you mm. get stuff done, but right, not really or necessarily. Um, well, welcome, Ashley. Welcome back. Thanks are you for ready for? Me. Are you ready for tonight? What do you think is going to happen tonight for Jen Brown? Well, um, we're going to find out what's going to happen with this urn. I am right. a little nervous because if the answer is. We don't even need Mary. Then it's going to make things like, more complicated, right. I think. So uh, I'm curious what we're going to find out, but um, we'll see. Well, it is a mystery. The mystery of the strange urn that the characters have uh, have procured and been using to sort of uh, feed their Anarch army. Yeah, let's let's. How does Mary factor in? We uh, maybe you will find out tonight. Um, let's bring in uh, our next uh, cast member uh, who will be helping you solve that mystery. Uh, this guy is a gifted improviser, actor. He's been seen on shows like The Good Place. He plays Curtis Krieger, the drug uh, recovering vet. And um, boy, he's just a pleasure to have in any role playing game you run. Please welcome Mr. Ross Bryant, everybody. Oh, oh hey, pal. Hi. I didn't, didn't see you there. Um, <laughs> how's it going? Um, as ever, what do you got? What do you, no, what do you uh, at? As ever, I've yeah. got, got a book. Um, this is one I've been laboring over for almost all of quarantine because this may be the thickest book I think I, yeah. How many pages is it? Own? My God. I mean, it, it feels like, a, like about a billion. It's, um, <laughs> it's, uh, tw it's 1250 pages long. This is you also my have two bookmarks in it. Yeah. yeah, for the end notes, don't you know? Oh, <laughs> oh I wow. see. Wow, this is my impression of the guy at Penguin Classics that day. We're gonna need more paper. <laughs> <laughs> Bring it in, boys. Yeah. Um, what? Uh, what? What is it? This is one that I feel like. Uh, have you ever heard of Edmund Spencer's The Fairy Queen? <laughs> no. I think I have. Is so, it a play or a poem? It's a poem. It's an epic poem. And I think there's maybe a case to be made that this might be the first English language fantasy novel. Um, it's or, or one of them. It's, it's because it has a leg in like like Arthurian legend, like King Arthur's a character in it. But um, it's have you ever been to an art museum much like uh, or, a, or a history museum, much like our, our characters are going to go to today? Uh, <laughs> it's been a, like an allegorical tapestry covered with emblems full mm. of, of layered meaning. Both sure, sure. I follow you, Ross. Go ahead. Role. Yes, of course. Have you ever been looking at one of those tapestry, tapestries <laughs> and thought, well, this is pretty and all, but I wish I could read one of those for <laughs> sure. 12 hundred pages that's pretty much what this is um that was that was the um the worst sell of a book i've ever heard <laughs> you started by going it's a it's a 17th century poem and then you were like wait have you ever been to a history museum <laughs> and i'm already asleep and <laughs> never go. uh no um, i would dig it the most i think i would probably dig it i mean i would dig excerpts of it not the whole thing good my Lord. god it's it's dense as hell and um and really takes some getting used to, but because it's full of religious allegory, it has all the juicy uh, black magical stuff that, ah. you'd, that you'd want. Um, in particular, one of the characters who's like a sort of personification of evil goes and has a conversation with the personification of night, where she evokes the Demogorgon. Ooh, <laughs> oh. the Demogorgon. From Stranger Things. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that's amazing. Um... Good Lord. Uh, you know, Ross, at some point, I, I want to cut to you. I want to bring you into the stream, and I want you to just be doing ritual magic. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, like naked, covered in sigils with candles all around you, uh, oh, because man. you are a uh, a scholar of the esoteric, uh, I have to say. I know. I kind of wish that you had a YouTube, like a cottage industry YouTube channel where it was just Ross's gothic corner. <laughs> right. God, well, give give me a couple more weeks of quarantine, and any, any <laughs> I, desperation may drive me to anything. Ross's <laughs> Chaos Magic Corner coming soon. That's a subscribers only video. Uh -huh. Yeah, 
here at Stream of Blood. Uh, l- let me bring you somebody else. Uh, let me bring you another person into this uh, screen. <laughs> hey, who wants another human being? Uh, this guy is a human being. He's a, a brilliant actor, improviser, comedian. Uh, and, uh, you know, he uh, he plays the crusty old union dock worker, Miles Vanderbuck. Um, what a great guy. Please welcome Mr. Thomas Middleditch. Boom. Boom. <laughs> hey there. Oh, wow. <laughs> Just playing my canjo. <laughs> wow. Nice. Wow. Just sit, just sit here noodling and playing my canjo. Underneath the viaduct, uh, cooking up some <laughs> tender fiddles. Yeah, somebody left. There's still a couple of little bits of grub in these here old spaghettios cans. Yes, come over here. I'm having dinner. <laughs> Are know you just you... Miles Vanderbuck now? <laughs> Have you crossed over? <laughs> we are the I same. You were into Appalachian music, Thomas. Yeah, you know, I, I'm a big old country boy at heart. Mm-hmm. Sure. Sure. Yeah. Where, where where are you from originally exactly? Um, uh, Canada. But we have, oh, yeah, but it's deep, mainly deep the in the country. Just different type of country. If by country, I, I I think I mean, you know, just a nice, pleasant hippie town with a lot of hemp sweaters and a lot of marijuana and some local raves. Oh, yeah. I know about Canjo's there. You damn straight. Yeah. Um, how are you? Welcome back. How have you been? I'm pretty good. Yeah. Uh, you know, been been on been on the the old Twitch a lot, streaming video games, as they say. Mm. Oh, great, mm. great. Uh, well, uh, welcome any people that followed our friend Thomas Middleditch over. Um, now, your character Miles Vanderbuck has been absent for an episode, and actually, uh, it, well, is everybody ready to play? Because I'm ready to go. Are you guys ready to go? Let's I think I'm ready to go. Let's do this because our first yeah. order of business is to find out. Where was Miles? Um, <laughs> uh, Miles uh, yeah. didn't participate in the last episode, and uh, he, you know, I, I explained that he's sort of the Wolverine of this X Mansion. He goes off on side quests by himself all the time, uh, while Kitty Pride and Cyclops have to run the ranch. So, um, <laughs> what I want to know is uh, where was Miles? Now, I have a couple options here for him. But maybe, but I don't have, I don't, you know, I'm not tied to any of them. So uh, maybe you have an idea of where Miles was uh, for a a few days recently, Uh, Thomas. Okay. I, (laughs) to be honest, I completely forget the last session. Oh, I think it was, wait, wasn't it? We were waiting outside in the van. No, in the car. No, the last one we played with you, we were in the bottom of that for sale house. Oh yes. yeah. Right? yeah. Right. Okay. Oh, yeah. So, you know what? You guys you guys remind me that a recap is in order. So um you uh you you underwent an, a, a mission against a Camarilla coterie, the Blood Dance. Uh and you infiltrated them using our friend James Brown. Uh you recall that uh, Jen Brown now has a thin blood alchemical ritual that transforms her into right. uh someone of the male sex. Um she infiltrated uh their their dance clubs, their nightclubs. Um, and uh, that led uh, Curtis and Miles to uh, one of their hideouts in the uh, Forever Clean facility there in Pittsburgh. And uh, you guys wreaked havoc on that facility. Um, you uh, basically staged a Nosferatu attack because you'd read something in the yeah, thumb drive traitors. that said, mm-hmm. yeah, right, exactly, that <laughs> the Nosferatu and the, and the Toreador were kind of fighting over the nightclubs mm-hmm. in Pittsburgh. And the compromise that was struck was that the blood dance coterie made up of Toreadors and Nosferatu would get those nightclubs. Well, you've you've uh, in theory thrown a wrench into that that very you know uh, history deal by kind of staging a fake uh, Nosferatu attack on the blood dance's headquarters. You destroyed the Nosferatu member of the blood dance, uh, a guy named Amon, and you had rats attack and you wrote things in the in the dirt that made it seem like perhaps uh the nosferatu had called him a traitor and attacked the blood dance um uh, and that was the last session that miles got to participate in uh then the last session was sort of a uh a downtime session where 
uh, our friends, uh, Jen Brown and our friend Curtis Krieger had to kind of manage this army of anarchs that's now hanging out in the abandoned Brownsville hospital. And there were a lot of things to deal with, for example, getting them all fed because, um, well, the crew in charge of feeding, uh, you know, hasn't really been able to procure a lot of blood. Uh, the Anarch Army is, is using, uh, and that's the focus of this episode, actually. We'll get to that in a little bit. But they're using an urn that uh, yes. at one point belonged to the Prince of Pittsburgh, but was stolen by the Anarchs. And it has uh, supernatural powers. It turns any kind of blood placed inside of it into uh, genuine kindred vitae which is uh, an insane advantage for the Anarchs in some ways. Like um, when someone drinks from it, they feel empowered. Their hunger goes down to zero. Um, it kind of is like uh, free health care for all the Anarchs. And, uh, you know, they're very into it, but it does need blood to put in in the first place. So I'll key you in on what your friends did during that session, the decisions they made in a moment. But where was Miles while they were kind of managing the troops? Now I understand. Yes. Um, well, I mean, I it, it it I would I will have to justify essentially leaving <clears throat> early or late while being hidden in that house, right? And the real estate agent came down, and I believe from what you guys told me, you devoured him. <laughs> That's oh, yeah. 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 Um, so, yeah, okay. we handled that a little bit off screen, but uh, Ross Bryant's character, Mr. Curtis Krieger, failed some roles, yes. uh, was at Hunger 4, yeah. and devoured a real estate agent. Okay. I tore so, him asunder. So then maybe once the sort of the, the rage subsided and you got back to the closet, you found that Miles Vanderbuck was no longer there. He sort of disappeared into the night. That's because, let's see. I thought you were reaching for your can, Joe. <laughs> That's because uh, the, of Miles that would have been the greatest transition. Yeah. Well, I'm not as look, funny. I think, that, I think that Miles. I think that you know oh. we 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 sort of it doesn't matter, but we sort of can and established. Just for anybody who's in the chat right now, like, wait a second, that's not what Jared said. Uh, Miles did let his friends know that he had to head off into the night. And, you know, Thomas, if you want, we can leave it up to a roll to find out what you did. I have a little. Oh, I was going here. to say, I mean, I'm not sure. I'm not sure what else I would do, but I think have, uh, having spent some time with that young, uh, unbitten woman who's now Dylan. on. Dylan, yes, young Dylan. She's reminding me a lot of my of my own daughter, Amy, and the biker guy that she's with uh, reminds me a lot of uh, what's his name, Terry or fucking Troy or <laughs> <It's> <laughs> Travis, guy. right? Travis, yeah, the guy that she's dating, and so he might want to like in the bushes at night, like peer in them and make sure they're okay, <laughs> just to check in, just to check in, watching over his daughter. Why that's on my sheet. <laughs> um, I thought that you might say that you'd go check in on your touchstone again, which is a, it, it, it makes sense. It's a great idea. So, um, yeah, Miles has been spending several days watching over his daughter. Maybe he even connected with her again, had a conversation with her. Um, but in order to kind of watch over her, he has to, he has to kind of stay away from her. Right. That's what yes. you decided to do. Right. Yes. I think that you need to, let, let's just quickly find out how all that went. Give me a resolve plus stealth roll and uh we're not going to make it a very high difficulty we're actually going to see how many successes you get and decide what happened based on that all right and i have a question after this roll okay well i got five successes buddy wow Okay, what's your uh, He's got a, do you want to know what happened steel. or do you want to ask the question first? No, I, I can know what happened actually. This is uh, well, with five successes, I think I should let you narrate it. I mean, and it should benefit you in some way. Five successes is so many successes that uh, Miles should have some sort of huh. benefit. I think that then, if you had, I, ha I know, per I know the perfect idea because it was going to bleed into my question. Yeah, great. Okay. So let's just say <laughs> that Miles is uh, creeping in the bushes, longing his dead, unfunctioning heart, not beating for his daughter uh, as he cries a few tears of blood <laughs> and wishing that he could hold her just that one last time. 
And tell me this is too much. Tell me if this breaks the story. But I believe maybe that at this point, Miles is unawares that he's being tracked by I actually don't know who. So uh-huh. since he's so he's been so successful at looking at his daughter, again, I'm not going to fish for too much. Let's just say on his last, his final night, he leaves the house and on his way out, he sees a car waiting by the street with two sort of silhouettes in there. He doesn't, he's not going to confront him, but it just registers as something. Oh, me. I think absolutely. Um, uh, yes, approved, uh, signed, sealed. Um, you are aware that someone is is following or keeping tabs on Miles. And I'll go a step farther. Um, you uh, you can tell that the car is like a uh, one commonly used by plainclothes policemen or you know an unmarked police car. Hmm. Interesting. Not who you thought it was? No, that 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 kind of makes sense, but I'm just making sure I had a thought, but then I realized he's dead. <laughs> uh DJ's dead. And I well, I I'll the, the, oh, yeah, the remaining it's not DJ. Yeah. No, the remaining thoughts I will uh bring to the group when I return. And it, it let's say I come back, I don't really have to sneak back into the hospital. I just do and try and find Jen and Curtis. And if they ask, I just said, I, 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 had, I had to see about a girl. <laughs> no, I just said, I just had to see my daughter one more time, but don't worry. I, I kept the masquerade. Uh, yes. So let's set the scene. You return um, a, a couple nights hence, uh, and we're in the old Brownsville abandoned hospital. Um, it's been fixed up a bit now. It's not quite uh, as much of a shithole. There aren't as many, you know, uh, there's not a debris everywhere. There aren't walls like falling half in. Uh, the vampires have been working to make it a uh, livable space, unlivable space. Um, and um, you can find uh, Curtis and Jen in the operating theater, uh, the place where communion has been taking place with Mary. Uh, and in fact, one communion took place while you were gone. They are in there perhaps kind of chatting about next moves. Uh, and Miles, you may join them. Okay. Um, guys, can I uh, speak to you in private for a minute? Because I'm assuming Mary and the other folks are with us here um uh, no not necessarily i think maybe oh. this is just a time when uh jen and, and curtis are talking yeah then um, maybe I, in like a classic uh <laughs> what's what's that fucking um tom hanks movie da vinci code da vinci code come in like pretend to be praying or whatever but like just sidle on up and talk quietly as we all home and home and home, and home, <laughs> home. we're all angels <laughs> penitent, penitent man mm-hmm. um and just say uh who do you know who do we know that's on our side that's in the on the on the side of the law police force who do we have i don't know if we have anyone on our side on the police force i don't think we got anybody not anymore the camaria had people on the inside and i know that churchill had some of his own cutouts so that he keep eyes on their people i think the cops are owned by the camaria almost entirely Okay. Well, the cops are sucked and paid for by them. Okay. <laughs> sucked I, I, that, and paid that for. Came out. No. Uh, hey, I get it. I get yeah. it, brother. Um, does uh, so either uh, I had to take a look at my daughter. I just I gotta know she's safe. But uh, there was a car outside, and either her dipshit boyfriend Travis is up to something which could be possible or they know who she is who she, whose daughter she is and they might be well let's just say they're looking at her they're watching her are you sure they didn't just follow you because if you- that's the case you might have led them right to you go <laughs> No, no, no. It's certainly fine to role play that possibility, but I will say as your storyteller, 
I want you to know where you stand as players and in the game. And I will say his five successes means Miles clocked them. They didn't clock him. Okay. So, well. But still, Miles thinks, I mean, I was actually (laughs) careful. I mean, if you're careful, then then things, then it should be okay. But the heat is, the heat is starting to rise. They can only keep eyes on each other for so long. We've sown a little bit of discord, but they're going to come at us sooner or later. Miles, did you get a look at the car, the license plate, anything? Do you remember anything? It said it's, uh, you know, one of them plain clothes undercover cop cars. Did I get a look at the license plate? That's a great thing. What? Five just, successes. I'm probably sure that there's a role I could do. Maybe uh, it depends. Yeah, there on probably if my is. Intelligence uh, slash s investigation role does any work. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that would work. Well. Let me see. License plate. License plate. <laughs> um, one success. R. Um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, no, you didn't get a plate. Uh, with one success, no, you didn't. Hmm. Um, but maybe the make and model of the car. Maybe? Yes. Oh, yeah, Ford Taurus. No, it wasn't actually. It was a uh, Ford Crown Crown Victoria. Hmm. Okay. Uh, and you guys, uh, I mean, well, Miles knows because he's an old Pittsburgh Union man. That uh, cops who aren't, you know, in the official cars that you know have sirens and you know everything on them, like you know detectives and such in uh, Pittsburgh, they are often assigned or they drive around in Crown Victorias. Did we? I'm, I'm. I maybe don't have this. Did Did we have a name for Churchill's personal police informant guy? You, um, you did at one point, possibly. Actually, no. He kept it a secret from you because, as you recall, he did not want you oh, to dude. expose him. Right. You could uh, identify him out of a lineup because you've seen him face to face and spoken to him many times. You could even recognize his voice if you heard it, but you you don't know his name. Okay. Young black like- guy, uh, shaved head, um, and uh, you know, uh, very competent uh, fit. Uh, mm-hmm. But uh, you'd have to you'd have to kind of see him to be. Oh, there he is. Right. And Churchill was what coterie was he a part of? He was gangrel. Churchill was the sheriff, the and sheriff. yes, he was of the gangrel clan. That's correct. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and we didn't really like- meet any other gangrels. I there, mean, are no other gang gro- there are no other gang there, there are in no the as far as we know. Okay. That's right. Um, Churchill was one of the few holdouts. Uh, a while back, the gangrel all left uh, the Camarilla and became part of the Anarch movement. But Churchill was one of the few gangrel that stayed within the Camarilla when that happened years ago. Okay, if so it's question. Detective, my guess would be that <clears throat> his loyalty would have passed to whoever <clears throat> inherited the position of sheriff. So Ashley has a question. Which is, right. did any of Jen's snooping? Or can I, I have to roll again, don't I, to see if our plan worked or to get any sort of beat on what's happening with the Camarilla. So you, so that's one of the things. So here we go. We can, we can, inter, we can inform our friend Miles Vanderbuck that one of the things that was uh, decided on and implemented during the last session was that you guys decided you needed some sort of spy or mole within the Camarilla. And the way you decided to do that was to maybe turn a ghoul, right? Like one of the ghouls of the Camarilla perhaps could be turned into a double agent for you. Um, so you've made the preliminary steps towards doing that. And what you did was send Dylan and Cross uh, to investigate the Ventru. The Ventru operate out of the steel stacks and several corporate uh, uh, businesses in Pittsburgh. You've sent her to uh, concerts at the Steel Stacks as sort of like uh, some eyes on the ground to kind of maybe, yeah, uh, oh, there's cross. Oh, wow. <laughs> I didn't know we had a cross uh, uh, image. He's, I love how friendly he is in that photo. <laughs> in that yeah, he, 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 ha- he pulls that energy sometimes. Yeah, he totally does. Um, that's, yeah, that's, him, that's him volunteering for this job. Oh, for this like, job. 
exactly. <laughs> so Cross, like you had to kind of talk him down from doing it himself because um, he didn't quite realize that having a huge cross tattoo on his face might make him distinctive. Um, uh, so uh, you you guys suggested that maybe he take the, the only mortal in your Anarch army, uh, Dylan. Uh, she's not even a ghoul. Uh, and kind of use her as boots on the ground to kind of find out who are the ghouls or or the the vampires operating uh, in the steel stacks and who you might turn. But that is an ongoing process. Um, and we can even say that perhaps it happened the night before that you kind of started that mission. So you probably don't have any info yet, Jen Brown. I was also asking about, because don't I, I, I'm trying to set up some sort of back channel Yes. Um, and I had to roll for it last time, right? Yes, you did. And I think that um, that's also an ongoing process. But okay. you're, trying to, you're trying to kind of um, uh, spy on Sabrina, your, your, your very close friend and your former CFO of your company, uh, who now, as far as you know, belongs to the Nosferatu. Um, I'll allow you to roll again. We can make some progress tonight on that. Like, let's say that that you know we're kind of we're flash flashbacking a little bit to, to earlier in the evening. You worked on it some more. So why don't you give me another technology uh, plus? I think let's call it wits roll. There's probably uh, no way for me to have any information that would help us figure out who these. Like, I guess I was just asking because I'm wondering if we have any intel on the Camarilla now that we didn't have before about how things have changed since our little adventure. Yes, That's a great a question. Ruse. I would say as you guys are discussing it, you can see Miles, his knee bouncing. He's starting to get agitated, lost in thought of like, oh my God, they're going to they're gonna get after Amy. So you can see the fuse mm -hmm. ticking. Uh-huh. Yeah. So uh, then I will reframe that, Jen Brown. I think that you are you are furiously checking the progress of like, you know, I think you have like some different devices and de-encryptors running to like break her security. And I've got to tell you that, unfortunately, I, I can't give you any clues because okay. those bars are still slowly ticking down. You accessing. Yeah. Accessing. <laughs> You're not in yet. Um, so um <laughs> Okay. So yeah, but but uh, good news that this abandoned hospital now has a, a lot of outlets that are working with like a big <laughs> multi-screen setup for Jen Brown in one of the Just rooms. Full like <laughs> VR like <laughs> lawnmower man. <laughs> yeah, it's a Minority Report. Jen Brown's yeah, yeah. like moving things on a wall. Nineties um, Angelina. It's like Angelina surfish. Theater. Yeah, uh -huh. I have like yeah. seven screens for no reason. I'm wondering if there's a clever We're way diving into the netverse. <laughs> good luck. <laughs> I'm wondering Whoa, if shit, there's a... there goes zero cool, zero cool. That's None of our cool. other anarchs. No, they wouldn't know anything. I'm just wondering if there's a clever way to get some sort of sense of what's happened to the Camarilla since without exposing ourselves and without waiting for Dylan to come back. But um, just so that we can try to figure out maybe who's tailing Amy. But did Dylan go to mind. the Camarilla or to the old dance club of the? The other people. The right. dance club right. of the yeah, the steel steel stacks. Stacks. It's kind of a concert venue. It's also like a, a horrible corporate, like you know, it has like an old fashioned -y main street that's like uh fake and was built in like two thousand and fifteen. You know, it's got a cold stone creamery. A pedestrian yeah. mall. A <laughs> pedestrian mall attached to a music venue that's like Coming soon, Ario Speedwagon. Oh, you know, it's shit. like that kind of a place. Do um, do we? Uh, we don't. As anarchists, do we abide by the masquerade? No, that's, that's come a up. Question. Um, it's because it's kind of a squidgy subject. I think we right abide now. by it in as in as, as much, much as it helps us. us. Yeah. Well, I mean, Miles is. No, he he doesn't voice his thoughts yet because yeah, I don't know. I don't know if I want to willingly bring Amy into this fucking shit show. <laughs> well, I know who does. Even though know, Miles kind of likes it, but I don't know. He, mm. I mean, I know yeah. who does voice their thoughts. Kenya, uh, the uh, other thin blood in your anarch uh, coterie, your coterie of twenty-five vampires now, um, who appears in the doorway and is like, "Are you ready? You said we were going tonight." Yeah, that's right. Can you just give us five minutes? We'll be right up. She heads out. 
Um, I assume that maybe by this point we've updated Miles on what we were planning on doing, but I feel like I want to check in and be like, are you all right to do this? Um, you may have updated him um, in the fiction, but have we updated? Oh, him? no, I don't think we've told you. We're gonna. Yeah. Yeah, I was about to be like, wait, I'm, I'm so. I'm my memory. Did they tell me tonight? <laughs> no, 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 no. Sorry. Uh, All this is cooking along. We got a lot of different. There are so the many moving parts to this chronicle <laughs> really now. There too There's many. like, like there. It's like f three. It's not four D chess. It's like seven D chess right. now. And um, yeah, also, when you bring up cops, is like, I'm like, Curtis turns to you, is like, and don't worry, soon we'll have some people inside on the other side of the law. Like, <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. I forgot. Oh my God! Curtis also oh, uh, started friends. establishing, yeah, the control of the the drug trade in Pittsburgh. It, it's He's a whole got a thing that, now. All mm -hmm. of these threads will come back, but tonight there is one thread on the docket. The thing that you decided, the mission you decided on, the thing that you're going to look into tonight, and I'll let you tell Miles about that. I'll only jump in if if there's a detail that needs clarified. Go ahead. So much of our power. So much of the loyalty that we've got amid among the anarchs here and our relationship to Mary is tied to this this urn that we don't know anything about. So we did a little digging and there might be some clues to find out about where it comes from and what it's all about to be found at uh, one of the museums downtown and the staff there. Now I'm not the smartest guy. I don't know an adjunct professor from a <laughs> museum docent but <laughs> Kenya's going to take us down there and we're going to see if we can find some answers so that we're not just totally in the dark but I know that you're worried about Amy so what, I mean what is it that we need to know you put a bunch of old, old shit in there and then when you drink it you feel great um, what's some professor gonna tell us about some goddamn magic vase do we know if there's any consequences do we know if we're getting are we getting our minds taken over to are be honest gonna, are you looking for a, one of them human human professors or are you looking for one of us we're looking for a human <laughs> Good luck. Gonna, what the hell are they gonna know about some vampire shit Ken has been it's, well we learned that this was taken from did did we not learn oh. that this was taken from a it was taken from the museum wasn't it yeah so uh, yes you you had learned that 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 yeah. uh i think kenya had a very old article that talked about how it had been stolen from this museum that museum's name is the elson uh the elson museum of near east archaeology mm -hmm. uh, and it's attached to the pittsburgh theological seminary it is a branch of that uh, that uh, institution of higher learning and, and a seminary, of course, means they train uh, they train clergy, in this case, Presbyterian clergy. Okay. Um, Something we need to be mindful of is whatever we find out about this urn, we need to make sure that our relationship with Mary and everyone else's fear of Mary stays intact. Yeah. Okay. Whatever we learn about the urn might be a little bit more that we learn about her. So this is, and also Kenya did a lot of this um, independent research herself. And part of this is trying to keep the band together as it were, so that we're not splitting and splintering and doing things on our own like she was. So this is also a little bit of, it's a, it's a loyalty mission for us. We got a bunch of different agendas <laughs> operating amongst the 25 and not everybody likes to be led. Cross needs to go out on a mission. Right. Kenya needs to put her intelligence to the test. And also Bob's here. So <laughs> we got the, I, I wonder then the cats to herd. Cause Thomas, the player wants to go along with the mission that feel that that's that is tonight. But I wonder if miles can sort of, if he can think of one of our one among us in the ranks to maybe go keep an eye on at a distance, uh, mm. those who are watching Amy. If he just, can just to delegate, delegate at least some light surveillance uh, 
on that. I'm trying to think of who would, who could we trust to do that? It's a great question. I mean, you know, uh, basically the, the, the people that you've talked to a lot within the coterie, within the, within the Anarch band, uh, have been kind of assigned to each of you. Um, there's Thana, Circe, and Mary who've kind of been working with uh, Jen a lot. There are uh, Rhodes. They're the true believers, right? They're the true believers, yeah. And they're, okay. you know, uh, Circe is kind of more like I'm into the magic of it or the supernatural powers of this urn. And Thana is a true believer, and Mary is uh, a very true believer, uh, the preacher, if, if you will. Um, and then there are the warriors that have been working with Curtis, uh, Dutch and Smokey, the uh, the Iron Horseman, mm -hmm. uh, Rhodes, the uh, Redneck, who's brought his yeah. two brothers who are ghouls along, uh, and, uh, and Cross. And then uh, there are the people that have been working with Miles, uh, who are uh, Kenya and Bob. Now, um, <laughs> wow. <laughs> I love Bob this scene. <laughs> Bob's Bob has the incredible discipline of uh, why didn't we or are you sure we should have? Uh, uh, he reminds me of the energy vampire from uh, what we do in the shadows. So, um, so Bob me, might Bob was actually creeping in as my first choice because really? if he were to ever be found, he can maybe uh, give us up. Come off no, come off as like Uncle Uncle Bob, like he's kind of like. He doesn't I, have a I'm a vampire witch with supernatural powers vibe to him, uh, nor does he have a I'm a vampire apocalypse warrior vibe. You're right. He he probably mm -hmm. fits in among the general human populace better than a lot of vampires. I don't know how much I trust his gumption. Yeah. What exactly but, do you want to do, Miles? Do you want to you want to surveil this detective? You want to protect just, Amy? You want to put just, a guard on there? You. Yeah, I mean, you want to? She's my daughter, Curtis. I know, but if we're going to send one of the Anarchs, we have to find a way to justify it that isn't just a personal favor to you. Well, then I'll go. Miles, they're looking for you. You know they're looking for you. Well, the the museum can wait. What if they get what if they get Amy tonight? We can go wait in the bushes, send an ambush. Third as you like that kind of stuff. Bring your guns. What if we do something that Jared's gonna love? <laughs> and split the party. <laughs> well, I, I can I can say a couple of things, which is I'm fine with you splitting the party if that's what you want to do, although we are all aware of the risks when you split a party. Uh -huh. I'm also fine with you saying. You know what? I'm going to tell Kenya, fuck the museum, and we're going to go stake out the guy that's staking out Miles' daughter. You can do that. This is, this is, I'm prepared. I have done my research and my, <laughs> I've written pages of things, and we can do whatever you guys would like to do. So, um, it's probably I, I also, as Kenya. a player, don't want to bogart. The, the, the no, I like this do. actually. I like yeah, that there's this weird. That there's that there's like a tent like a, a conflict of where to go. Yeah. I mean, my my uh, suggestion would be right. that Curtis, you go with Kenya, bring another anarch if you need to, because Miles and I are not going to engage, right, Miles? We're just going to watch, gather intel. We'll come back, maybe even reconvene with you guys if it's yeah. appropriate. Yeah, he says yeah, nodding as he's putting his samurai sword on his back. <laughs> It's good time. Yeah, I, I'm just Can not going to be useful at the museum if could, could goes we down, say, which it definitely will. Could we say real quick within any of these days that I had during my off time, because I always forget about it, um, I have a craft skill. Could I have maybe like shortened this massive katana into like <laughs> whatever they call the short katana so I can stow it more concealed? Sure, although I don't know off the top of my head what they call the short katana. I know that you have there is a name, but I don't know. I don't know what I don't I, I know that you have excellent craft skill. So here's what I want. Let's see how you did at that. Okay. Uh, give me a uh, why do I feel like strength? A strength plus craft roll to see how good you are at like blacksmithing. 
and um, in order to uh, make it into an equally dangerous weapon that is now much more concealable, you just need to give me three successes. How does four sound? It sounds like um, you've made it better, and it is now more concealable. So, yes, you are sliding this very uh, small, uh, concealable, uh, killer uh, diamond-hard blade uh, on your person somewhere. Yeah. Is You're it, uh, I've just Googled. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I was looking for. Wow, Washizaki. you did that off the top of your head. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm remembering how awful... I was at trying to stop Miles from doing shit the last time that we were at odds. And I'm thinking actually now that maybe just me and Miles going somewhere is a terrible no. idea. Yeah, I, um, like, I would like to roll to convince. As someone who wants to see drama but... happen, it sounds like an awesome idea. Awesome yeah. idea. <laughs> um, but but I, of course, you can decide to send whoever you'd like with Miles. Miles, what were you saying? I'm sorry, you you were gonna uh, recruit someone else for this? No, or? no, I was going to conv I was going to convince Jen that yeah, this is we're all we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna be to this is complete it's complete reconnaissance. Look, I, I've made my blade shorter. What am I gonna do with this thing? It's a fuck. It's bare. It's a knife. <laughs> I feel all like right. I should contest Steaks. this. Katanas. I feel like I feel like I know Miles well enough to know that well, this is I can't, go I can't allow up. you. I can't allow you. We can do a little PvP. Do you want to roll insight on him and see how uh, how much you believe that he will? I think Miles believes that he's just going to do reconnaissance. Uh, sure. Thomas can contradict me. I think oh, Miles okay. thinks that, but maybe Jen knows him well enough now that to know that. Uh, his best intentions may be thwarted by his own impulses. Why don't you give me a uh, wits plus insight roll, Jen okay. Brown? Where are we at hunger wise? Are we good? Yeah, uh, great question. I think you're up to one again. You know, the the, yeah. the urn uh, feeds you and takes you down to zero, but it, you know, not for that. Uh, you know, night after night after night. I got two successes. Okay, um, I think uh, I think that that is enough. <laughs> unfortunately that's enough to to know you don't trust him but not enough for you to have planned some sort of backup like uh oh in case he tries this i've already done this kind of thing um but we haven't we haven't uh definitely decided that this is what we're doing right or have we no no you haven't you can you 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 know you can talk okay. <laughs> i'm gonna i'm gonna look at curtis as if to say you want to weigh in kind of thing because I feel um, like, come on, let's go. Kenya actually sticks her head back what in we, and is like, are we leaving? Five minutes are up. Look, <laughs> you, what, are you, what are you doing? You're protecting your daughter? Or are you doing reconnaissance? You're trying to see if this car comes back to, your old, to her place and tail it? You're just trying to make sure that they don't bust in. Uh, come C and B. I, I just want to make sure they don't do nothing. And if I if we spot them again, yeah, tail them. Find out who these guys are. Don't you want to know? I mean, hell, if they've got people tailing us, if they've got people knowing who the hell we are, knowing who my daughter is, well, then uh, who? what else do they know? Who are they even? I mean, are these guys Camarillo? Are they ghouls? Are they just cops? I'm going to change my mind, actually. I'm going to say... We can send Bob for reconnaissance. Bob? I mean, yeah, yeah. Kenya's still Bob. there and she's like, You're gonna send Bob to do something? <laughs> Just let me go. I mean, I, I'll go by myself. I promise I won't do nothing. Miles. Alone. Relax, Jen. Relax. Part of me's like, if it is the, if it is the detective that I've seen, then I could ID him. But what that would only tell me that the car has a Camarilla connection. It wouldn't tell me anything more than that. That why the don't, uh, right. why don't we what about, go and we'd send Bob and Kenzo to go talk to the museum curator? You can do that. I feel like if we don't go with Kenya, we're gonna we're gonna lose her trust. Yeah. So. I wanna, I would actually say at this point, I would I would send if it were up to me, I would send Curtis and Bob, and then Miles and I would go with Kenya to the museum. Hmm. So Bob and I are now staking out. <laughs> yes. 
because you, if if something goes wrong, you I'm, can ca take control of him, or you can maybe ID the cop, and you won't go in guns blazing if something. I, all do. right, we've been arguing for a while. Okay, I would miles, no, 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 no. But I, that's just me. Look after his daughter. The then storyteller, you the storyteller's coming in now and saying we've been arguing <laughs> for a while. So, um. I think that everybody can make a role. Okay. And then the person who gets the most successes gets their way. They get to choose the the, the marching orders. Okay. So um, I want it to be, uh, let's see. Um, and you can <laughs> each use different pools if you'd like. Um, so for Miles, Miles is stubborn. Miles can roll resolve. Intimidation. Uh, yeah. You want to roll resolve plus intimidation? Yes. Are you intimidating your friends? Um, yeah, I'm, okay. I'm not like with like violence, but with just like, he's getting worked up and he wants, he wants to go. It's like a, it's he like is a, a, there's clenched teeth involved. He is a bruja and they, you know, their blood runs hot. So you guys can see that miles is getting more and more like predator like, and, uh, you know, kind of cagey, the more that you kind of try to you know, talk him out of this course of action. What's Curtis going to, I, I agreed miles, you may use intimidation, but understand that using intimidation sometimes has fallout in your relationships. Uh, Curtis, what is, uh, what is your tactic? Um, I want to, I'll roll wits plus streetwise to be like, what is the, like, what's the, like if they're, if, if cops are going around, who's going to be the least conspicuous, who's, who's the best equipped to actually, do something effective in both of these situations. Great. A, a logical argument about tactics, a, a very Curtis uh, move. Uh, you can do that. And Jen Brown, what tactic are you going to use? Remember, whoever gets the most successes here gets to decide what's happening. Jen Brown, what are you going to use? Uh, I was thinking intelligence plus persuasion to try to map out what is strategically the, the most uh the best option and then use persuasion to try to convince the team to go that makes it. that makes total sense so you're just for the thing that's best for the entire anarch uh army you're, you're yes. the, the entire group um okay um what are your <laughs> price pools for each of those miles Vanderbilt, I, can, I already i already rolled it you guys win <laughs> I, had, I had seven dice and all of them failed really <laughs> 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 okay well that's okay that's all right but but you know even jen and, and curtis had different ideas of maybe mm -hmm. how it should go down so they should go ahead and roll as well what are your dice pulls guys uh curtis what's your dice pull six and what's yours jen brown seven okay uh pretty pretty close go ahead and roll let's see whose argument wins the day here i already mm -hmm. rolled yeah and it's two two holy <laughs> shit okay um i could have won it <laughs> uh, okay. I'm going to defer to Curtis. Wow. Okay. I'm going to defer to Curtis. Curtis, Mr. Tactics, Mr. Strategy, who's going on what mission? Tell us. Okay. Um, yeah, and I don't want to. I don't want to fight in front of front of the everyone. Um, mm -hmm. So Smart. yeah. Uh, hmm. uh, okay. Jen, you should, Kenya, Jen, why don't, I will accompany, oh, God damn it. <laughs> yeah, 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 you got it, y'all. And you guys, and you guys, what are you saying, Curtis? Come on, Miles I thought we were all going. Fucking, oh, God, he's going to fucking chop some heads tonight. Um. God, I don't want. I just want to keep an eye on this fucking guy. Um, <laughs> okay, great. Yeah. Um, you need protection too, in case something goes south, though. Um, you could send us with one of the uh, like Dusty or one of them. Right. No. Yeah. I, I think that's the move. I'll. Uh, um, okay. Yeah. Uh, why don't the two of you go with uh, go with a uh, uh, Smokey? Okay. So there you go, Smokey. Smokey the biker uh, anarch with uh, with uh, Kenya and Jen Brown to interview the staff of the museum. Is that right? That's right. I'll go with Miles. Okay, great. And you know, it, it even makes sense. I mean, if you came up like six vampires deep to these uh, 
these uh, <laughs> scholars, these academics, it would come off as it's pretty strange. So uh, Curtis and Miles are going to go and continue to stake out Amy Vanderbuck, uh, Miles' daughter from his mortal life, while uh, Jen Brown and Kenya go to try to find out more about the urn. Um, I'm as we're parting, before we yeah. do that, can I grab Curtis's arm? Mm -hmm. Like as maybe as like Miles is walking and just like, don't let him do something stupid, please. You think I want to bring the world down on us? I'll make sure he doesn't fuck anything up. But it would be nice to know if we're being tailed. Hey, and then I just hand on shoulder, like, make thing, make sure things don't go south. I don't want Smokey to have to do anything. <laughs> <laughs> um, how many great. times? How many times I I saved your hides, killing everybody? You're loose Me. cannon. Oh, your cannon is loose. Yeah, yeah man. We, I wonder if you did anything lately that we don't know about that might cause the police to know who you are. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, yeah, no, the pro the, 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 in all likelihood, just to, you know, uh, remind our, our viewers and to remind my players, maybe it, the all likelihood, the reason that Amy Vanderbuck is being staked out by some sort of uh, police presence is because miles snuck into the morgue at the actual, a police uh, headquarters and chopped off the head of the Man. Prince of Pittsburgh. You're um, probably the, the the reason you're probably head of the Anarchs right now is because of me. All right, so just relax. That's that's also that's also not untrue. Not Look, we've decided our marching orders. I'm going to take a very short break, uh, and then <laughs> when we come back, we will uh, see how it all goes down. Uh, so let's take a break for, you know, a couple minutes. We'll be right back, everybody.
this entire time. That's good. <laughs> 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 oh, wow. hey, we're back. Um, that was amazing. Um, uh, <laughs> welcome back, everybody, to Vamp <laughs> Five. <laughs> Episode uh, 25, part two. So here we are, and um, we are uh, starting where we left off. Our, our party is split. They have decided to go uh, separate directions. And I believe I will start with our friend Jen Brown uh, and her associate Kenya uh, and uh, Smokey. Smokey, the Iron Horseman. Uh, you guys are heading off to speak to uh, some of the staff of... Uh, the Elson Museum of Near East Archaeology. So, uh, Kenya lays out some printouts that she made at the library. Here, I'm gonna I'm gonna cut it down to Jen Brown for a moment. Here, here we go. Yeah. Um, and uh, she shows you some printouts. She printed out like kind of the staff page on the website, and she and and uh, you and she have been working over the last couple nights to find out where you could find these people. So you don't necessarily have to go to the museum after hours. You you now have their addresses or places that, um, you know, their their Facebook shows they're known to frequent. Um, so uh, you, she says, um, oh, we have a couple options here. Who do you think that we should talk to? Uh, and she shows you a uh, um, professor of Bible studies and archaeology, Dr. Mm -hmm. Ronald Lapham, who is a mid-40s, like, kind of, bronzed uh, guy uh, with a bit of a churchy look, if you know what I mean by that, sort of smiley, mm -hmm. and sort of like, you know, but still he looks like he spent a lot of time in the sun. Um, then there is a pastor, Wayne Stewart, who is an older gentleman uh, who, uh, you know, has squinty eyes. He looks like he might be a, a little bit up there in age and is, is balding. Um, he is, uh, by the way, the director of the Doctor of Ministry program at the Pittsburgh Theological Seminary, and he's also on the board of the uh, Museum of Near East Archaeology. Uh, we have Gwen Eastman, the curator of the of the uh, Elson Near East Museum of Antiquities. So she she her whole job is the museum, um, and she is. Um, when you look at her photo, it's like the kind of photo that where you look at someone and then you sort of forget what they look like and you have to look back a minute later. Like she's a, a woman who leaves not very much of an impression. Um, she's not very striking, uh, but she's also, uh, you know, she's she's very average uh, in, in appearance from what you can tell there. And then uh, Dr. Abraham Galanti, the doctor of sacred, a, a, a doctor of sacred theology and philosophy uh, at the Pittsburgh Theological Seminary. Uh, another old man. This one, um, not quite as uh, average looking as as our friend Wayne Stewart. This guy looks like a modern day King Lear. He's got long, flowing white hair and a big, impressive beard. And in his photo, he's striking kind of a dramatic pose. So Kenya wants to know who you think is the person to talk to about the urn, perhaps about the theft of the urn many years ago. Okay. I think my instinct is the curator. It makes sense, right? She's the one whose entire job is the museum. Mm -hmm. um, so you could try her at the museum or you could try her at home because uh, you're, um, I've gone ahead and uh, GM Fiat, storyteller Fiat decided your hacking skills have allowed you to kind of track down her address you were planning to go and do this mission so you have found out where you can question her where would you like to look into dr gwen eastman well so we wouldn't have arranged to speak with her at her home we would just be sort of you could dropping it like. on her you could arrange if you'd like where does she live in the city um, she has uh, uh, an apartment in Shadyside, which is, you know, kind of a hip area of town. Okay. And you have to have a little money to live there. It's not a low income area. And do I know what, what coterie operates in that area? Um, a great question. So let me look at my chart of Pittsburgh coteries. 
And when I look at that um, uh, over the different Camarilla coteries that operate in Pittsburgh, I don't see, you know, I, I believe that one of the Blood Dance's clubs was over. In, actually, it wasn't in Shadyside specifically. Um, Shadyside uh, may be only significant because I believe that's where uh, Churchill's bar was uh, mm. before Churchill was removed from uh, the city. So there isn't um, like a, a ton of Camarilla activity there necessarily. Certainly the Camarilla had divvied up that neighborhood to somebody, but it wasn't oh, someone sorry. that you know. It's not someone who, where you're like, mm. oh, this is their territory inside of the uh, the thumb drive, you know? What time is it right now? I'm going to say it's early because, uh, you know, it, it makes sense that you guys would go as early as you can. So um, it's, you know, it's 8 o'clock at night. And would the museum still be open to the public? It would not, but um, in theory, she might still be there. Okay, let's say that then that maybe we arrange through email to meet at her residence. Great. Um, and I'm wondering if there's a way that I could have found out if she knows who Jen Brown is, because I'm just now realizing that the last person I, the last moral person I interacted with, recognized me. Right. Now that was a reporter. Not, that was a reporter. Uh, not, but an academic might as well. I mean, it's 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 possible. So um, you were being kind of a sly in your email, right? You were kind of trying to find out some things. Is that is that uh, reasonable to assume? Yeah. Okay. So um, let's see how your email went. Let's, let's go with a manipulation plus... Uh, how, I, I don't know if I want to go technology this time because it's 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 you kind of uh, of um, sending a message. The it wasn't you weren't manipulating the web to do this. You were manipulating words. Mm -hmm. Manipulation plus etiquette, please. You're okay. asking to meet someone you've never met before and see if they know who you are. Critical success. A critical success means that you uh, <laughs> you actually struck up quite a little uh, uh rapport with this woman oh just over email like uh you know uh, you guys were vibing on shows you like toward the <laughs> end of this sort of uh back and forth uh correspondence and so she's looking forward to uh, having you over to uh her apartment tonight and she's been talking about the tea she's going to make and uh uh and she can't wait for you to meet her cats um <laughs> So uh, that is the situation, uh, and, and okay. you're fairly certain she doesn't know who Jen Brown is, to answer your initial question. Okay, then let's say that we meet her at her house, um, right. and I want Kenya and I to go in, and I want to um, ask Smokey to keep a lookout. Right. So um, your car heads off into the night, and Smokey is on his uh, his bike. He, his uh, his uh, hog rides ahead of you uh, through the night, uh, and you um, you soon park outside of uh, Gwen Eastman's uh, unassuming apartment building and buzz her, and she immediately is like, "Hello, hi, it's Jen." Oh, hi. Yeah. Uh, uh, okay. I was just getting out of the shower. Come on up. And she lets you in. Um, so soon you're standing in, uh, uh, the doorway, uh, you, you, have walked through, you've, you've entered the apartment of a, you know, it's the apartment we all had when we were, you know, 26 or something like that. And, and Gwen is quite young. Um, you can see as she kind of dries her hair, she's dressed, uh, and, uh, She's got all kinds of funky books and, and prints all over the wall. Um, she seems like kind of a fun gal. Um, she uh, she likes those Funko Pops. Uh, and um, she's got a uh, video game system kind of uh, running uh, in the other room. Uh, and she's like, hi. Yeah. Hey, Gwen. Hey, how's it going? Hi. And Kenya's like, Kenya. Hi, yeah, uh, Jen mentioned you. Hi, come on in. Can I get you guys some tea? Sure, tea would be great. Great. Um, Smokey has uh, a cell phone, right? Um, yeah, if, if okay. you've if you've uh, outfitted him with one, he has one. I'm not gonna okay. say that you can't contact him. Okay. Um, so uh, she brings the tea and uh, 
great news. You're thin bloods, so you can eat a little bit of human food. Um, maybe they did send the right people on this mission. <laughs> um, so uh, certainly tea, which is, you know, basically slightly flavored hot water. Um, you can take sips of it. But you notice that Kenya, uh, who the whole reason you're here is because she's a very particular eater, is kind of like having a little trouble with it. But Gwen doesn't appear to have noticed yet. Okay. Um, so thank you so much for meeting us. Uh, we're, we're really excited to talk to you. Um, I'm going to say that maybe what I've, what I've said is that we're, we're sort of researching, um, we're researching instances of, of theft in different museums. We're like sort of compiling, we're like researching for a project that we're doing sort of thing of like right. different like thefts that have heists, right? Yes, exactly. And, right. um, Kenya found some information about an urn that was taken. Um, when was that? Yeah. No, I did. I looked into that. Yeah. yeah. Um, so it was part of a dig uh, a long time ago, a long, long time ago. Uh, I think in the in 1960. Um, and uh, wait, I have the stuff. I, I actually brought the stuff from from the museum. Hold on. Oh, perfect. Uh, she um, she puts these uh, folders out onto uh, her tiny little kitchen uh, table. Uh, uh, and uh, she goes, okay, yes, here we go. Okay. Yeah. Uh, all right. So that, that urn that you're talking about that, that was stolen uh, in the, in the sixties um, it's from Cana. Cana. Have you ever heard of Cana? No. Wedding at Cana. Does I look at Kenya? Does Ken is is that sparking anything for Kenya? Kenya is like looks at you like I don't know what that is, uh -huh. and uh, she's like, "Oh, are you guys? You guys are not like Bible study people, right?" No, sorry. <laughs> no, it's fine. The wedding at Cana is the wedding where Jesus turned the water into wine. Oh, yeah. Nice. I mean, like um, to do it, he uh, he put the water into jars. Maybe he put it into one of these jars. <laughs> Can you imagine? Uh, probably not. They used jars <laughs> for lots of things back then. But, um, you know, I, I can't really tell you a lot about it because it hasn't been in the collection for like, you know, many decades. And unfortunately, like. You know, the person to really talk to is the per people who dug it up, but that guy died years ago. Oh, really? Who who was he? Did he did he write anything? Did he have any sort of books that he uh, published, articles, anything like that? Yeah, he worked for the seminary and the museum for a little while. Uh, you know, even uh, back then, uh, his name was Doctor Ernest Olmsted Orman, and she puts a photo in front of you, and you are looking at. <laughs> the Tremere Primogen of Pittsburgh. The guy you met in your first session. No way. The guy that tried to adopt me, right? That's right. And uh, Ooh, in fact, okay. I'm going to make a composure roll uh, based on your reaction uh, to see if, you know, you kind of show that you're kind of like, whoa, that guy. Um, composure plus subterfuge. Okay. Oh, that's not a great roll for me. Let's see. Yeah. You need two successes for her not to notice that you're surprised by the photo. I got one. Ah, uh, okay. So um, you see her kind of clock some surprise on your face, uh, and she's like, "I'm gonna say, I'm gonna hit, I'm just gonna like tap Kenya and be like, doesn't he look just like that guy from that other museum heist?" Uh, let's see how good Kenya is at uh, lying with you. I like <laughs> your lie. I'm not gonna make you roll. I'm gonna make Kenya roll. Uh, doesn't he look like that guy from that other museum heist? Let's see how she does. Okay, here she is. And here is her social skill. Okay. Okay. Uh, she goes, yeah. Yeah, maybe they're connected. That's that's wild. Yeah. So weird. Wow. Wow. Sorry, we were just we we're researching all these different things, and he just looks 
exactly like this guy from this other thing that we were researching. But anyway, to steal it. Oh my God. Can you imagine? Like he that would was be, an inside man. That'd be so wild. Tell me about this. Like, what is this? Is this, is this uh, for your thesis or what are you working on? Well, we do, um, we're trying to kind of do a podcast, you know, I know there's a million out there, but we just feel like, you know, you know, like my favorite murder, that kind of thing. We sort of want to do something a little bit less grisly, but interesting I still. I love know? my favorite murder. It's love. so great, isn't wait, it? Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> and she like has like a t-shirt like, <laughs> uh, and like a pillow. Uh, and then she's like, wow, that's so great. Well, I mean, you know, if you ever need anyone with like knowledge about museums, like I am a curator of a museum. Right. Yeah, totally. That's and great. Like, yeah. Yeah. And there aren't like, I don't know. I'm like totally bragging on myself, but I would like love to be a part of this. Like there aren't a lot of like 26 year old women who are like curators of museums. I, you know, honestly, I didn't want to like comment on your age as like a thing, but I, I'm, it's really impressive. Like, that yeah, I mean, well, it's, you know, it's whatever. It's just like, but like, you know, the, the podcast would have to be, you know, you know, moral. Christian. Moral? Oh, right. Mm -hmm. But I would love to be involved. That's so great to know. Um, hey, would you mind if we um, took a picture of some of this stuff that you brought out or like took, you know, just sort of looked through some of the stuff just for reference later? Is that okay? Or, or. Of course. Yeah. Not, not at all. Go ahead. Okay. So I'm going to kind of just go through and as I'm like still chatting with her and like making nice or whatever, like just flip through the stuff and take photos of things. Uh, you do that. Um, uh, well done. You, you, you've gotten, so, you've got an interesting lead. You've got an, an interesting bit of information and you now have all of, you know, the information catalog cause you're taking photos and she's letting you do it. Uh, I'm going to leave you there for a moment and check in on our other players. I'm going to check in on miles and on my friend yes. Curtis. Um, <laughs> Amy Vanderbuck's apartment, nine o'clock on a Wednesday in Pittsburgh in the year 2019. Well, we've talked about it. It's not an apartment. It's a house. Amy does have a house, uh, but she's uh, always kind of struggling to pay the bills on it. It's a, it's a little kind of thing um, in uh, one of the uh, more suburban neighborhoods here. Uh, and uh, you guys are uh, playing the stakeout game again. Tell me about what you're doing. Um. Yeah, sounds like I'm. I'll, I'll have driven and uh, pull up, cruise into the neighborhood, and if there's a place to street park, where we can keep an eye on the place, there is. Um, yeah, pull in there and uh, turn down the <laughs> like John Denver or whatever is playing at the time, um, and um, park some ways away and just see if there's anything. Travis's car is there or Amy's or something else. Travis and Amy's cars are both there in the driveway. Travis drives a uh, Chevrolet pickup truck uh, and Amy uh, has, uh, you know, uh, a sort of older than you, you'd like her to have uh, Buick. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I, as I described before, uh, surveilling them is not too hard because they, they have one of those sort of, uh, houses where they have like a big front window and they've placed their TV right there, you know, and their right. couch up against the window. So you can, you know, you can kind of see their heads like as they talk to each other and move in and out of the room with snacks and things like that. Um, let's see. Um, hours go by. Okay. Um, hours go by. Uh, and, um, uh, you can tell that they're kind of starting to get ready to go to bed for the evening. So if someone else was going to kind of keep an eye on them, that person may have showed up by now. Hmm. What are you thinking? I'm, I'm sorry. I mean, if somebody's putting a tail on them, then they're not very diligent about it right tonight. Yeah. If, if a tail is what they want. Um, hmm. 
Let me see. Um, Curtis, okay, great. Uh, Curtis, you do, however, as like the lights are going out, you do suddenly, uh, as you guys are talking, actually give me a wits plus awareness roll, both great. of you. Wits plus awareness. Okay. Wits und awareness. Oh, I see. Hmm. So, um, in order to catch what's happening, you you only need uh, one success. One success. Okay, if you get more than that, you'll know more. Uh, Miles, how'd you do? Zero. Wow, uh, the dice are not on your side tonight. <laughs> Miles is completely taken underwear. Curtis, you just see a shadowy form moving toward the car quickly and with intent. Oh, okay. Um, I, uh, how far away are they? Um, they're almost on top of a car. If you I'm opened your door, you'd be within striking distance. In front of us? Uh, no, they're they're on actually your side of the car. So they're coming up to the driver's side. Yeah, and they're uh, headed from Amy's house toward you. Okay. Crossing um, the street right now. Okay. Um, I, uh, hmm. Shall okay. They I, are, I, I, uh, I start. I start the car. Vroom, headlights on. Vroom. Okay. Uh, the car is on. Headlights are on, and the headlights reflect a little bit uh, from the street and everything. And suddenly, the shadowy form comes, uh, becomes illuminated, and he's already knocking on uh, the uh, driver's side window. And it's Travis, uh, Amy's uh, boyfriend. And he's I, like, I, Miles. I, I get pink. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you get pink now. Go ahead and get oh, pink, gentlemen. I mean, hopefully it's dark enough and there's flat. Well, I the lights are not yeah, on. The interior yeah. lights are not yeah. on. I agree. Hopefully, yeah, I agree with that. Yeah. That's, and that's just I a see. rouse, right? Um, that is just a rouse roll. Miles, do you get pink as well? I successfully get pink. Oh, very I, good. I successfully get pink as well, but I get hungrier. And Travis, you always, oh, you got, yeah. Travis, Every, Travis, you always successfully get pink. You always successfully use the blush of life to make yourself look human, but sometimes using that blood makes you hungrier. And so, Curtis, you do become a bit hungrier. Your hunger goes up to, I believe, to. Yeah. And now this guy is in a, uh, He's he, you know, it's 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 Amy's boyfriend. He hasn't even bothered to like put a shirt on. He's in like a pair of like by bi uh, basketball shorts and slippers, no shirt. You can see all of his tattoos, and he's knocking on the window, and he's like, Miles. Yeah. 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 So yeah. I, I'm uh, the window's not down yet. I'm just I'm like, do you want to have this conversation? Um, I have to have some version of it now. Okay, I roll, uh, I roll down the window. What are you doing here, man? Uh, it's It had just been a minute. You know, I had to uh, skip down some, some work with the union. They're dragging me back in, you know, but I, I had a few moments. I just wanted to check up on you, but it looks like you guys are in bed, so. Uh, you can't keep doing this, man. Doing what? <laughs> I've seen you already, you know, driving around here, watching her. Like, if you want to be in Amy's life, you have to be in it. You can't do whatever this is. Miles. Fuck, man. I don't know what shit you're fucking. I'm losing my marbles, Travis. Yeah, I think so, man. No, no. Travis, I'm losing my marbles. And I'd like to. Put a little pitiable and some type of deception there or something because doctor says it's Alzheimer's. <laughs> Early <Ooh>. stages. <laughs> Wait, what? Uh, I don't want Amy to know. Make a pitiable uh, subterfuge, a manipulation plus subterfuge roll. And if it's part of the... the Pitiable thing I get that that there's a bonus. You get the right? extra dice, yeah, okay. the extra die. I want to say that Ruby's in the back seat of the car, just like 
the luck is back. <laughs> How many successes? Five, five successes. Okay, he's like, I didn't want it. I didn't want to tell her. Is that why you faked your own death, man? Yeah. Yeah. So Dude, please. we could help you with this, Miles. No, no. You got no idea to know that you're in everything. You told me I drove around here. Hell, I probably did, but I don't remember it. I don't remember what I was driving. I mean, what was I driving for crying out loud? Fuck, dude. Fuck. Travis, you, you should have me. your family helping you, man. Who? I'm sorry, man. Who are you? He, he uh, is my helper. Yeah. Um, helper? The, uh, Curtis is like thinking quickly here. Um, you know, the union pension provides some, uh, services for, uh, for our members. So, yeah, I'm, uh, I'm sort of a caretaker that they provide. Don't worry, Mister uh, Vanderbuck's in very good hands, and I pat him on the on the shoulder, and I feel the the sword. <laughs> <laughs> Look, Travis, you gotta promise me now. You can't tell Amy. I I need to be able to trust you on this. Man to man. I don't want to tell her, man, but. I don't know, man. People have been asking about you. I know. Just as, as far as they're concerned, I'm on. Who's been asking about him, uh, sir? Anybody Anybody else from the union? Who, who's been asking about me? Who? Uh. <laughs> Fucking cops, Miles. Oh, Mr. Vanderbuck. We really got to keep you from wandering off. You got to... Did they leave a card or anything? I can call them and sort them all out, I guess, even though. They left a card, but I don't know, man. I, I'm worried about you. And uh, yeah, excuse me, Mr. Um, helper. I, I don't fucking know you. And um, shit, man, you know, I'm on probation. I, I can't get in trouble again. I. I, I got to tell him I saw you. I'm I, sorry. No, no. Don't hang around here anymore. You're confusing Amy. You're going to hurt her. Travis. I'm sorry. Travis, you tell me. Head back into the house. I get out. <laughs> I get out and go to him and just, <laughs> just oh, grab wow. him. Don't, man, because you know I can kick your ass, all right? Like, you're an old man, and I don't want to have to kick my girlfriend's dad's ass on I my know. front lawn. I know, I know. I'm just an old guy. I, but you can't, you can't, you can't tell it. Just, I'll take care of it. Look, the company. He works for a company. The company will take care of it. Just give me the officer's name so I can contact. No, I, I think I gotta call him. I'm, I think Travis. I gotta. Call him. I'm happy to. I'm happy to make the call, sir. I mean, I'm. The, the organization I work for deals with this sort of thing all the time. If the officer left a card or anything, we'll sort everything out so you don't have to bother about it. I understand a probationary situation can be very complicated. We're happy to take this off your hands. It sounds like you are being persuasive. Maybe you're being even a little bit. You're, yeah. It sounds like I'm trying to perf lie in a very complicated way which is not my forte <laughs> no it's not but it, it was a good lie and so i'm not gonna uh penalize you for making a good lie um i think that you need to give me a manipulation that might not be your your strong suit but you can choose something other than uh one of your terrible skills uh for that great lie that you just told i mean can i uh, this this gets into like I'm just a simple Southern lawyer, but can I argue that um, <laughs> the skill of streetwise being the wisdom of the streets, whereby Curtis has, in, in his lowest moments, had to come up with all sorts of tales and desperate desperate hustles and angles in order to score and avoid uh, capture by the law and, uh, and, and people that he owes money. Um, and, and, and getting out of these sorts of scrapes is just the sort of thing that happens on the streets and this is an example of the wisdom that provides, Your Honor. <laughs> but watch yourself, McCoy. 
yes, sustained. You can go ahead and uh, make a manipulation plus streetwise roll. It does make sense that you're talking about probation and cops yeah, yeah, exactly. and things like that. Yeah. Okay. Um, but um, Travis seems pretty intense on calling this guy, so I need three successes. Uh, two successes. Can I burn a willpower to? Oh wait, That's... can you use a willpower to reroll hunger dice? You cannot. Oh, in that case, I'm hosed. In that case, Travis goes, do not make me raise my voice. Do not make me wake up my baby girl in there. Get off my lawn, Amy's lawn, technically, and do not come back here, Moss. And he heads. Travis, wait, I, gra I, grab, his, I grab his arm. And I, and I, I hold him. Hey, give me the car. I'm still playing the old man. Give me the car. All right, I didn't want to fucking have to do this, Miles. Let go of my fucking arm, dude. I don't. Where is it? I reach for his pocket. He reaches back. <laughs> and, and this turn, he's going to try to punch you in the face. That's okay. Now, what kind of person punches an older man who has just convinced him that they're suffering from Alzheimer's in the face? Bad man. <laughs> I would, I would argue to our viewers and to our players that Travis is some old school Pittsburgh trash. <laughs> and uh, this is how you solve problems in his family. So uh, here he goes with his uh, not insignificant. Uh, he's going to try to punch you in the face. Miles Vanderbuck, what are you going to do? I'm going to take the hit. Pretend like it hurts a lot. Yeah. Collapse you know. into him and try and take his wallet or card or whatever the fuck is in his pocket. And if this I'm basically going to not fight back, get hit a bunch, really pretend like, Aah! and then like steal from it. <laughs> and, if this guy is telling, and if this guy is telling me that he has to, seems this seems like a probation violation to me. So I'm going to, I might try to, I'll try to leverage that if the pickpocketing doesn't work. Yeah. Okay, so you're so yeah, yeah, yeah. Curtis, you're gonna hold off maybe this round and maybe bring in like another social role if uh, Miles's gambit doesn't work here. I know um, that Miles can take human punches all day long. <laughs> Miles, <laughs> here comes the punch. Let's see how it does. Um, the punch, uh, it's no kind of critical success or anything, but he does get three successes in his punch, um, which is enough to really connect with your head. Uh, enough to give you the momentum to believably kind of like take the hit. And so now from Miles, I would love a manipulation plus brawl or a um, it's you're almost doing some physical acting here, aren't you? Um, actually, you've got to take a hit and pretend it hurt. And then, uh, and then try to pick well, his pocket. Well, there's so much going on in this role. What do you? It looks like it did. Play? It looks like it did hurt hurt me. I just want to sort of it kneel, my, have my knee, knees buckle a little bit and go go towards him. I guess. Yeah, I guess I want. I, I guess I want you to like pickpocket him more than anything. That seems like the hard part of the role. Pretending that a punch that hurt hurt doesn't seem hard. So yeah. why don't we go with um, some dexterity? to grab something out of his pocket and uh i mean i would go larceny honestly okay yeah dexterity plus larceny and uh the number of successes you get will determine what you get out of his pocket one success oh um, wait I i'd like to use a willpower that's a good idea give me that willpower re-roll the dice that you can with the willpower Okay, so two total. <laughs> okay, that's enough to get his cell phone. Do you want to palm Travis's cell phone, which yes. he had in his biker, his basketball shorts as he walked out across the lawn? Because nobody yes. is ever without their fucking cell phone anymore. Yes. Okay, you have it. And he's like, I didn't want to do that, Miles. Please. Hey, let me just let me just call him. Otherwise, I'm gonna get in trouble. You know that was a long time coming. You have always disapproved of me, and now the things are on the other foot. 
you realize that I'm the one that's got to protect Amy from now on. Yeah, okay. Don't. At this point, I t I grab um Miles on the shoulder. I'm like, Mr. Vanderbuck, are you all right? It seems like the people that should be going to the police tonight are us. In fact, I think I've got a complaint that I need to make. Well, you go ahead and make that fucking complaint, and I'll be making my own report to the people that talked to me earlier. Good night, gentlemen. Don't he hurts I, heading I, into I the grab house. him. I grab him again. Don't tell Amy. Don't tell her. I won't. I love that girl. I would never. I, I won't tell her. Okay. All right. Um, and he heads into the house. Um, and how long do you think it will be before he realizes that he can't call this guy because he doesn't have his cell phone? I turn to Curtis I, I and I show him the phone. Like, okay. 23 skidoo. Yeah, and, um, we, I hustle back to the car. Um, great. Um, you hustle back to the car and you are, um, you're turning it on. You're getting ready to go. Yeah. I mean, can, um, just, and can it just skip, Ruby it have a code on it? Can we slide it open? Um, you'll have to figure out the code. <laughs> of course it has a code of some sort. Um, you're not able to open it, uh, at, at present miles. You're like in the passenger seat, like furiously trying to figure out what his code is. Ruby starts growling. You see a light go on in the house, and here comes Travis across the lawn again. What are you going to do? Uh, what do I got to give this are you pulling phone out? Back, are you pulling away? Are you giving the yeah. phone back? I start to pull out. Yeah. Go, go. And, and I'm there. You drive away. <laughs> like, seems to me that he's probably, I mean, if he's got that officer's number on a piece of paper, he's going to call it on a landline in about. 10 fucking minutes. But who has a landline anymore? <laughs> I um, mean, yeah, you could use you could use Amy's, but I mean sh shit, that that went that went kind of sour. I wasn't expecting that. What the fuck <laughs> did you expect, man? <laughs> oh god. <laughs> um now there uh, is someone who knows how to open unlocked phones. Yes, exactly. Let's go to the museum. Well, oh really? Okay. You we'll just go wait outside. Jared, we're not going to go in. Okay. We're just okay. going to wait outside. No problem. Um, I think this is a moment where maybe I have I could text um, uh, Jen and be like, things got, or, things got little crazy, but okay. Where <laughs> were you at? <laughs> Great. Um, so uh, let's bring Jen Brown back in. Yeah. Hello. Um, Jen, you get a text as you're finishing up, um, kind of uh, taking photos of of these uh, these documents. Um, does it seem like how long have we been there? Um, not long. I mean, uh, I guess I guess you've hang, hung out long enough that if it was just a business appointment, you could leave. You know, you, it wouldn't seem odd. Okay. Um. I'm going to, I'm going to see the text and go, Oh shoot. Gwen, I'm so sorry. We have to get going. Um, I could talk about podcasts all day, but, um, I just, okay. Well you have, you guys have my, uh, yes. Right. Okay. Um, sure. Sure. Uh, it was so nice to meet you. Thank you so much for, uh, oh, sure. for making yeah. the time. Sure. Okay. I'm, I'm sorry. It was like, this was so, st I mean, this was like, this place is so, messy and i'm sorry no it's it's great it's great thank you so much um uh i i'll i'll uh, get back in touch with you soon kenya uh puts down her teacup and was like it was very nice to see your home and she <laughs> heads out uh, <laughs> uh i'm sort of like bye and then uh follow her out and shut the door and um as we're leaving i'm gonna text to to meet back at base very good. Shall we set a scene at the hospital? Yeah. Yes. Very good. Um, soon you're all uh, the four of you. I mean, uh, you know, Smokey f <laughs> Outrider uh, kind of keeps an eye on your car uh, as you head back uh, to. Uh, oh, nice. Hell fucking yeah. <laughs> yeah, dude. dude. <laughs> that guy is fucking tight as hell. <laughs> uh, all right. 
So uh, your vampire biker uh, guard uh, leads the way into the uh, old abandoned hospital's uh, parking lot, uh, and soon you are once again all uh, meeting um, in one of the halls. I want to uh, take a second to uh, not like lay it on too thick, but like thank Smokey in a way that's like not overbearing, but just like thanks, man. Uh, it would have been it was really nice to know that you were there. So thanks for coming with us. I know it was uneventful. Hey, no problem, Jen Brown. Hey, by the way, man, uh, me and Dutch was talking, and uh, I know y'all said you've been wanting to uh, recruit more people for, uh, you know, what we're doing here. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like, we know a bunch of uh, what you might call independent operators uh, down at Route 79. Um, sure. We could uh, kind of go on what a bit of a recruiting tour. Uh, but, uh, well, I don't have a gift of gab like you do, little lady. It might be nice if, uh, you know, we brought some of y'all with us to, sh to show people the, the power of Mary, you know? Uh, I think they'd join us real quick. That's a good idea. Thanks. Just a thought. We could make introductions. Talk to Miles and Curtis and, and Mary and see what they say. Appreciate it. You take it easy. And then I'm like, excuse me. <laughs> Very nice bikers. Very um, nice bikers. Box. Mm -hmm. The bikers are no problem so far. Um, yeah. Okay. <laughs> so, keep it that way. Who knows? Um, so you have, you're back in the hospital and you guys can kind of share your intel. Mm -hmm. So uh, I guess, is Kenya with us still? She is. Yeah. She's like, so it looks like the head of the Tremere knows what the urn is. He's he's the archaeologist that found it. So how come he isn't coming after it, or or, or how come he let the prince have it? I don't I don't understand. Do we know? Uh, and I'm like going back in my I'm literally going in my files, but maybe Jen is doing the same. Um, we know where the Haven is. Um, currently there you are do five, know the of the Tremere. Yes. there are five known members of clan Tremere or they're just only five members of clan Tremere. I have Pittsburgh that. Note here. Isn't, Pittsburgh isn't like boiling over with, you know, hundreds and hundreds of vampires. So in, according to the thumb drive that you have, which as we've said, some of it might be a little out of date. Mm -hmm. Um, there are five members of the uh, Tremere Chantry. Uh, and, uh, they are headquartered at the economy village, I believe is the name of the place. Mm -hmm. uh, which is an old kind of like commune. I mean, there's so many reasons he could have given it over to the prince for some sort of leverage as part of a deal. They obviously know it's important or it wouldn't have been locked up in his office. Yeah. Maybe we need to start setting our sights on the good doctor. If he knows how important it is. I mean, maybe he... Maybe he'd even join us. I don't know. He was one of the first people I interacted with when I turned. He doesn't have too much affection for me. And I don't think he seems like the type that would flip unless he is kind of a mad doctor. So you just got to give him a reason to. He is. Uh, just a reminder to anybody uh, watching or to maybe our players as well. When you first met him, he was fascinated with the thin blood condition. Right. And he seemed to kind of want to use you as a, I mean, this is why you were thoroughly and reasonably skeeved out by him as sort of a uh, test subject or he wanted to kind of study you. <laughs> I'm going to convey that to Kenya. And she's like, oh, God. Yeah. I guess I don't want him on our side. We'll think about it. Well, what about these other people? Like these other people like uh, who, who work at the museum? Maybe they know something that Gwen doesn't, you know? It's possible, but if it was stolen, excavated and stolen that long ago, I don't want to... I'm remiss to dip our toe into too many areas now. We've been seen by one person. If any of the Camarilla get a scent that we're on this trail... They're right, going to be right. able to start yeah, predicting our movements. Yeah, more lies and more lies. And then, yeah. I mean, we already have to start a podcast now. 
<laughs> you can come up with a name. What? I'll fill you guys in. Look, if you want, we can try to do it through channels that don't require us going in person. I can give you an email that's not traceable. You can try to contact people that way so that we don't have to interface in person, see if we can get stuff that way. But we also need to hit Clan Tremere. They were sort of on our list. I mean, I was thinking of them maybe being next on our list. Um, so this well, is we definitely don't know anything about them. Well, you don't necessarily need to without I mean, let's see. We know we know we know where their haven is. Um, we know that they were formerly a Christian commune. Cathedral of Learning, that's their haven, right? No, their haven's an old economy village at Pitt. Is that right? Uh, so, yeah, the, uh, good questions. Um, uh, you know that Dr. Orman conducts sort of business sometimes out of the Cathedral of Learning at Pitt, but that their haven, the where the Chantry and all the vampires sort of dwell, is at a place called the Old Economy Village, which is an old Christian commune. Are, is that group that's involved in the love triangle that we destroyed, or that's a, this is another group? This, this is, is a, a different, different group. group. Okay, okay. What we um, need are more ghouls. We need, we need intel. I wonder if there's someone we could turn. That's not the doctor yet, if at all. You need a, you need a ghoul to do what exactly? If, if we want to take on Tremere, I mean, Kenya's not wrong. We need to know what we're dealing with. So we either need- What was that? <laughs> <laughs> Um, Everybody freeze. Uh, um, we should Bob. talk to Steersy. She knows about like magic and stuff. Like I, I've heard the Tremere have magic. Magic? What have you heard? I, I don't know. I mean, I've heard they have blood sorcery. Like they can, um, you know, cast spells and do things to your blood or like protect against sunlight with, with, uh, with rituals. Okay. Let's talk to her. I need to debrief with these guys, but that's a good idea. Wait. Talk to Cersei. Are we going to tell everybody about this Cana Jesus business? Because that kind of freaked me out. What freaked you out about it? I mean, do you want to tell Mary and Donna that we have Jesus's cup from well, I mean I don't believe in that shit apparently this is how Jesus turned water into wine well I'm going to keep it to myself you do what you got to do Tim Brown. And she walks out all right guys what happened oh things went great no problems at all. There may what be happened? A couple eyebrows raised at the house, but um, we've got my uh, daughter's shitbag boyfriend's cell phone. If we, we get into this, we might be able to find out something. Why some do you have his cell phone? I uh, thought you guys were just going to do surveillance. What happened? Yeah, he snuck up on us. <laughs> <sighs> Jesus Christ! Give me the phone. If you can crack it, if he's been in contact with whatever cop was questioning him, because the cops have been around asking about Miles. We don't know who, and we don't know exactly what, because he wouldn't say. Has, has he called them yet? Right away. No. But he's going to find a way. Unless, he, unless the only place he saved the number of the detective who approached him is in the phone that's in your hand right now. So he saw your car. Yep. We need to get rid of it. Can't use it. Give me the phone. Ditch that car somewhere smart. We need an entire new skill for vampires of Pittsburgh. Car management. <laughs> <laughs> There's um, so much car acquisition and abandonment. <laughs> There is, and 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 reasonably so. When you're, uh, you know, when you're uh, operating a shadow uh, conspiracy, uh, cars are very. I mean, Jen Brown's not wrong uh, that a car could be clocked or remembered. Um, so, um, 
we'll deal with that in a little bit. Uh, maybe you guys do ditch the car. It sounds like something that would be likely. And you won't be without vehicles if you do that, obviously. Now that you have an Anarch army of 25 uh, undead souls, actually 24 and one living soul, you have access to vehicles. But um, would we like to deal with the uh, with the phone? Um, yes, I'm, I'll be, I'll get into it, but I'm going to kind of like, look, I know your daughter is important to you. I know we all have things that are important to us that are not this movement, but we can't be doing shit like this all the time. Okay. What we ended up doing today was a cakewalk. It was fine that you guys weren't there, but you can't be making contact with your daughter or her shitbag boyfriend, if it means that we're gonna have to keep ditching cars fucking left and right, okay? I'm sorry to say this, Miles, but she's right. Right now, the, the thing that's gonna keep her the safest is for you to stay away from her. The less she knows about you, the less leverage they're gonna have on her, and the less they could do to her to get to you. They can kill her. And what do you wanna do about that, Miles? You wanna turn her? You want to bring her in here? You want to spend every night guarding her and put yourself more at risk? Put her more at risk? I don't care about this. I care about her. I don't want to be a goddamn anarch. You want, you can, you want to just go and tell her everything then? Miles, what will it the take only to way put that this you can, to bed? The only way that you can do that is if you make her like Dylan and just bring her into the fold. Well, we maybe I it. will. And I storm out of the room. But you... Uh -huh. Interesting. And punch the wall and hard as <laughs> I can on the Do way you out. really? Yes. Um, I like, I mean, you know, uh, as a vampire with several dots of potence, uh, Miles punches the wall as he exits and plaster and bits of wall go spraying across uh, the... Uh, old empty corridor um it is a violent uh demonstration uh but very much in line with his bruja blood um i want to if i can unlock the phone and basically download its contents onto a laptop that i have and i Great. would like, if once well i'm sorry no go ahead mm -hmm. what would you like to do because I'm the one who could ID the voice of uh, Churchill's ghoul. I just want to play the the voicemail. I want to play the voicemail inbox. Yeah. So um, let's go ahead and do the tech roll first. Um, Jen, give me um, – because I, I don't think this is the easiest thing in the world. You have to break sure. into it and everything. Please give me a wits plus technology roll. And in order to get into um, you know, his like uh, T-Mobile phone, Three successes will be fine. All right. Hold on. Hold on here. I got two. So let's give that a go again with a little willpower. Okay. Now I have five successes. Uh, that's more than enough. And so I can tell you that as you're searching through his contacts, you can even see when contacts were added. And uh, not even a week ago, he added someone uh, named uh, Dale Passio. Uh, and then he made the note, Sheriff. Um, Dale Passio. Um, so uh, this is possibly the contact that got in touch with him. Unfortunately, Curtis, there is no voicemail. All right. Um, um, do, this do we have I'm other... going to... Um, sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. No, do, do we, have, we have other phones, though burners sure why do you need a burner phone or i could even go to a try to go and try going to a pay phone are you going to go call dale passio is that what you're saying i'm going to id the voice yeah oh that makes sense of course um okay so uh jen are you okay with uh curtis going to do that are you going to let yeah. him do that okay um so um when are you going to do that because now it is uh like four in the morning i might save that for the next day then maybe very good. Shall we cut ahead I, a little bit? I have another. I have another thing. I have not to say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In the time honored tradition of role playing game players, you will never let a day pass. 
every game, it doesn't matter if it's Dungeons and Dragons or a vampire, people are I'll be like, and then the day's over, and everybody's like, No, it's not. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> okay. more, more things, which is we, great. Go ahead. We said during downtime that Curtis has been uh been having meditation sessions with Mary, right? That's right, yes. Having one on ones to to just learn about animalism and and all that. And I think maybe tonight I don't is that a daily nightly occurrence or it, it can be it, I think it's an often occurrence. I think sometimes Mary sends you away, actually. Of course, of course. Maybe if, so if she doesn't send me away tonight and we hunker down um I would maybe ask a couple questions. Um Ooh, yes, if uh, if the other players don't mind, let's set a scene with Curtis and Mary. And so um uh, yes, there she is. Uh, and of course, Mary, uh, you're all perplexed by the fact that uh, Mary of the obsidian skin uh, never really uh, put any furniture in her room <laughs> in the hospital. She just kind of sits, uh, you know, cross-legged on the floor in there uh, and she greets you when you arrive. Um, it's about an hour before dawn. Curtis Krieger. I just wanted to sit with you for a bit before I go down for the day. Okay, Gardens Krieger. There's but so tonight we're not going to do any sitting. You're right. Tonight, I want you to find something for me. What would you like me to find for you? There's a cricket in the hospital. How many square feet would you say this place is? Hundreds. I... Well, there's an hour till dawn. If you can find it, I'll show you the next secret. The well. path to enlightening your angel. All right. Um, there's still so much I don't understand. But I'm on the path. I learned so much before that's starting to become clearer. The angels inside us. But what does that mean about who I call God. What does that mean about Noah and <laughs> Abraham and Noah. Jesus? Yes. Yes. Well, I would put it to you this way. The United States military they say that they uh, protect the best interests of those that are scared and hurting all over the world. That they protect the interests of those that believe in truth and justice. Would you say that that is true? No. Well... The Bible was written by similar pieces of shit. <laughs> Often the opposite of the story is what is true. Cain is God. He just had very bad, uh, what's the word they use now? Publicity. All right. Can you hear it? I, I send out, Can I, do I send out a feral whisper? You may, yeah. You can send out a feral whisper. Um, and that's a... What, that's for that's that discipline plus what? 
Oh yeah, let me let me uh, you know as the storyteller, I should probably tell you that, right? Uh, remind you. Um, so your feral whisper uh, power is activated by just rolling your um, charisma or manipulation plus your animalism. Uh, now you're trying to look. You're looking for quite an alien mind, an insect mind. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to set the difficulty a little higher. Her little test tonight is a little higher. Um, can you give me three successes? Let's see. I can't. That's okay. It's not. I, there's so she, many, too many voices. She opens her palm and the. Uh, insect is in her palm and she's like you were trying too hard she crushes it the bible the human bible was a book for people whose lives flitted away like ash on the wind there is another book a book that I hold close that has taught me what to believe it tells of the antediluvians creatures that were immortal before Noah's flood came If we could find a copy, I believe we would empower our movement significantly. It is called the Book of Nod. Go tell Jen Brown and Miles Vanderbuck that I want you to find it. We're done here. Very well. Thank thank you. Um, Curtis, uh, you, uh, <laughs> head out into the night. I'm sorry that you, that you failed, uh, the test that Mary gave you tonight, but these, these hey. are the things that happen when, uh, when these sort of supernatural tests are, are given and, and tried. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that th- there's one final scene I want to set. I, I am going to make a night pass now. A day comes, the vampires uh, huddled in their various, uh, you know, their old uh, patient rooms, uh, the remnants of like torn, like operating curtains hanging, uh, uh, windows boarded over to keep the light out. Um, They lay there like frozen dead corpses until the sun sets again. And the final thing I'd like to set tonight is not so much a scene as a hook i don't even know if miles would be here for this but jen brown definitely would be jen brown you're talking to circe uh circe is a is a character we haven't talked too much she's one of the many random anarchs that were part of this movement who kind of uh glommed onto it Uh, i've described her briefly before she's got like you know dyed multicolored hair half of her head is shaved she's got a lot of tattoos lots of piercings uh and you guys can tell a lot of the tattoos are of different occult symbols and she considers herself a witch Mm. kenya said that you should talk to her uh and that's what you're doing uh in our final little scene tonight and uh seriously uh comes to you jen brown respectfully and says uh kenya told me that you wanted to talk to me Yes. (laughs) Yes. <laughs> what do you know about Clan Tremere and the magic that they seem to use? It's blood sorcery. So it controls the blood. It can make you hungry or, um, you know, uh, stop a stake from entering your heart. It's potent stuff, and they're very subtle in how they use it. All I know from what I've heard is that you should be afraid of it. Have you ever seen it used? No, no, I haven't. But I might know someone who could help us. Who? There's this independent 
you know, not Cam or Anarch really that I met on the way into Pittsburgh. Yeah, we need to get her to join us, right? Because she's like scary, but she like knows things, I think. And she has all these really intense looking books. Like, uh, like I think she could help us protect ourselves from Orman and his like magic. Did she show you anything that would make you think that? Oh, yeah. So we're, we're at this campsite, right? And she's like, yeah, I know a thing or two. And I'm like, bullshit. Like, every fucking lick I've ever run across says they know fucking magic. Like, show me your magic. And she's like, okay. And then she just fucking made the shadows in the clearing sort of come and cloak her. And then she could reach out with the very stuff of shadow itself and lift things off the ground. She grabbed me with strands of shadow. I was turned on, Jen Brown. (laughs) I won't lie to you. (laughs) But she didn't hurt me. I think she could help us. You just met her. How? I don't know. I have a feeling about her. How did you find her? Well, I think she's kind of circling Pittsburgh for some reason. You know, hunting in campgrounds. I I don't know why. It's like there was some reason she couldn't come into the city. Like something had happened to her here. Okay. Thank you. So. Sounds like buddy. And then I, and then got to find my. All right. My man. Oh man. Uh, Tonight's session has one more scene left in it. Uh, Yeah. Um, Making a call. Mm hmm. I'm going to call like 7, 7, 15, 7, 20 in the evening as soon as you awaken, mm-hmm. right? Yeah, on like a b- burner Nokia flip phone or something. Okay. Cricket wireless. You have reached the desk of Deputy Dale Passio. I am not available to take your call right now, but if you contact the Allegheny Sheriff's Department office, they will uh, help you. If this is an emergency, you need to dial 911. Thank you. I hang up. Do I recognize that voice? <laughs> Not at all. Sounded like another good old boy. Yeah. Okay. Well, sure. that's maybe less of a threat, or at least not the person we know. Can I but say to? Um, oh, I'm sorry. Someone we, it's someone we could. Someone we could uh, tell to meet us somewhere, and then do things to. <laughs> Ah, now you're thinking like a kindred. Um, Mm -hmm. uh, It is someone you could tell to meet somewhere and then do things to. Um, Jen Brown, what did did you want to ask? I wanted to um, make sure that all of the content of the boyfriend's phone was on my laptop. And then I want to uh, wipe it. Okay. Um, this is, we're, we're out of time for tonight. So here's what I'll say. Um, you wipe the phone. You're just, you're on your, you're on your laptops and you're just cycling through, you know, everything that you've been working on. And, um, you notice because you have some sort of, uh, device set to ping when people hit you at your various, um, your various aliases on various forums, you notice that you've been pinged several times again by the man that you knew was from the Inquisition. What does it say? A man or a woman, I'm sorry. We, we don't know. Um, are you there? I can help you. Talk to me. Are you in danger? It's like a long... And uh, when you get to like 
message number 30. <laughs> You've been busy. You haven't been checking this. <laughs> You've mm-hmm. been checking your alias on some weird fucking dark web site that you were on, like, you know, all the time. You're just doing all your business on your computer. You get the message 30. He's like, um, you've fallen too. And that's when he stops sending messages. Hmm. A week or two ago. So that thread's still in the air. And that is where we are going to end for tonight because we have gone uh, 10 minutes over our allotted two hours of gaming. But I want to know, I, 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 I don't want to just leave it there. What are people planning to do next session? Because I don't think we're into downtime again yet. I think that there's a lot of balls in the air right now. And uh, God, one of them's going to drop. So, uh, Miles Vanderbuck, uh, once again, on the outs with the Coterie, what are you going to do next session? Or what do you think you might do? Um, I might go and fuck shit up. <laughs> right. But I don't, I don't want to tell these people in any capacity because then they'll try to stop me. Or we could try to help you yeah. if you nah, don't you do it in a bananas me. way. You won't try to help me. I'll go in there and I'll be about to win. And then you'll like grab my fist and be like, <laughs> don't. And that's how you'll help me. So, uh, <laughs> uh, Curtis Krieger, what are you thinking next steps are? I'm, I either want to uh, turn Dale Passio or. Uh, or um yeah, Ghoul Del Pasio if he's not already. Or uh um find this um independent witch because the word she has weird books made my ears perk up. Right, made <laughs> Ross the player's ears perk up. <laughs> Ross the player's ears, but also based on what uh my conversation with Mary, I'm like, mm-hmm. Great. And Jen Brown, what are you thinking? Well, I wanna know how Dylan and Cross got along. Mm. Um, that might not, you might not know where you've progressed on that until you finish whatever this mission is. The mission oh, you've okay. chosen. Well, I mean, the mission you've chosen is to look into the urn, but I think that that's opened up a lot of boxes here, right? Uh, and then Miles went ahead and said, uh, not that box, and opened another box. Right. This is all no problem, but I think that that there's action happening the next couple nights for your characters. And then we'll hear back from uh, Dylan. We'll have like another downtime session. So uh, what do you think like happens, you know, or what the Jen wants to do the next night? I feel like looking into this, witch might not be a bad idea. Although the fact that she seems like she's like buddies gives me pause, but um, I do have sort of an uh, hankering to find out what's going on with clan Tremere. So, and if Curtis is keen to go hang out with the witch, then maybe, uh, maybe that's what we'll do. Um, all of these things will eventually come to pass or you will, uh, or your horrifying, uh, uh, and regrettable actions will make them impossible to carry out. Uh, because, uh, we have a living world here. And when one action is taking, sometimes you cut off the paths to other ones, but, uh, I think that's exciting, and this, there's a lot of possibilities there. Um, I can't wait to see all of it happen. Uh, thank you again, Ross Bryant, Miles Vanderbuck, uh, Thomas Middleditch, and Jen Brown, uh, Miss Ashley Birch. Thanks for being here. Let's have a digital round of applause for our incredible players. Um, we're early in our new season, so this is one of those early chapters just setting up threads, but I, I promise we're going to start pulling some next uh, session. Uh, I'm going to hang out for a minute, uh, but I'm going to say goodbye to my players right now. Thank you guys so much for joining us again and making it so, so good. Um, and uh, I'll hang out for a minute and do my end of show business. Bye-bye, guys. Bye-bye for now. We'll see you next Sunday. Bye. 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 Okay. So um, uh, our players are, are away, and uh, they'll be back next Sunday at 6 p.m. Pacific. This is the new... Uh, time slot for vampires of pittsburgh so we'll see you here again next sunday um i'm going to do my end of show business if you have questions comments 
angry, uh, angry epithets. Uh, send them into the chat, and my good buddy and secret storyteller, Clint uh, Trucks, will send them to me. In the meantime, please spread the word about Stream of Blood. Uh, follow us on t- Twitch. Follow us on Twitter and Instagram. That's where we let you know about special extra games that we're doing, some of these new benefits that we're going to be uh, providing to subscribers, um, all of that stuff. Everything we do goes across on our socials, so we'd like for you to follow us there. Um uh, if you're on Discord, you can connect with us and other SOBs. I just had to um, scroll up uh, one of the mini screens I'm using here. Um, you can uh, connect with us on Discord. There is a special Thomas Middleditch uh, Discord that you can follow. Um, what's it called? I think it's called Middle Twitch. Um, they talk about our SOB content a little bit. And there's also Stream of Blood, Server of Blood on Discord. So we'll be p- posting all of our official announcements on that as well. And uh, I'll be having chats with uh, players, uh, and uh, they'll be hosting our subscriber-only channel. So yeah, all the cool things that we can do will we'll be on there. So check that out. Um, and then, of course, because we are very old people, we have a Facebook group, too. Um, Vampires of Pittsburgh's music is by Axel Kazis Taylor. Um, and uh, our title card and in-game artwork are provided by Mr. Ross Bryant, you saw some of his beautiful work tonight. Uh, he's incredible. Check out his Instagram because he has more. He has tons of his artwork on that. And Will Potorf, who you can find more artwork from on willpotorf.com. Um, P-O-T-T-O-R-F-F. Will is an incredible artist, and he uh, deserves your praise. So go to his uh, his social media and give it to him. Um, I want to thank my producers, Brian Baldinger and Clinton Trucks, who helped me put all of this together. We couldn't do it without those two guys. And uh, our social media manager, Megan Arch, who lets people know that we're doing it. We couldn't do this without her. Uh, our logo for Stream of Love was created by Garrett Ross. And we've had additional design work by Sophia Otero and Sarah Carr. Um, do I have any questions or comments tonight? I'm so invested. When is the next stream scheduled for? Uh, the next stream of Pit- Vampires of Pittsburgh is 6 p.m. Pacific time next Sunday. Um, what date is that? I mean, I can look it up, but uh, you can probably look at the calendar too. Every Sunday for a little while, we'll be having um, Vampires of Pittsburgh at 6 p.m. Pacific. But is that our very next stream? Why no, friend? And I'm glad you asked. Our very next stream. Uh, happens um, uh, Saturday, next Saturday, and it's uh, part two of a Neptune Society storyline. We do a Call of Cthulhu 7th edition game. Uh, Oh, Clinton Trucks, hello. How are you? Uh, Are we not playing Coven on Tuesday, Jared? I thought Coven happens every two weeks, Clint. Goodbye. Yeah. Um, So my producers don't know when the shows happen, but thankfully I do because I have a mind like a steel trap. And if there's one thing people say about Jared Logan, it's that he is uh, an organizational mastermind. And so I have memorized when (laughs) the games happen. Um, So every Saturday, you can also see our Call of Cthulhu series with the amazing and wonderful Becca Scott and currently Ross Bryant is guest starring in that. That show, The Neptune Society, has a rotating cast, so we get all kinds of great people on there. Right now we have um, role-playing game designer, video game designer, uh, Kate Welch, who has been a delight. So check that show out if you ever uh, get a chance, and that's on Saturdays right now at 6 p.m. Pacific. Uh, Any other questions? Yes. Um, Actually, can we talk about Mage the Ascension? So everybody wants to talk about Mage the Ascension. Sometimes I interview players and they're like, when are you going to play Mage the Ascension? And I'm like, oh, hi. Okay. Um, I didn't know that many people. See, Mage the Ascension is one of my favorite games. Let me say that right away, first of all. Um, But there isn't a current edition of it, really. There's like a bunch of different, you know, there's the Onyx Path uh kind of 20th anniversary edition um it had a new world of darkness from the early 2000s called mage the awakening i'm sure you're aware of there's all these different editions of it floating around the reason that vampire was like kind of a oh no no shit go to for us is that it had a new edition people were talking about the game it has a huge following even though the people that are into mage are hard, hardcore into mage, I don't know how much of a, uh, you know, word of mouth recognition it has among other people that all that said, although you probably will never see a regular ongoing series of mage, 
the Ascension from Stream of Blood. I've heard so many people saying, please, please play it, that I think it absolutely must happen at some point. And what I'm thinking is I'm kind of planning on doing some um, GM how-tos, Game Master how-tos. Um, I don't think I'm, I'm better than a lot of the great uh, Game Masters out there, but I have been doing it a long time, and I have been doing it over and over uh, on a stream. Uh, and uh, I just finished a two-year D- Dungeons & Dragons campaign. So I, I have experience. So we're going to do maybe some how-tos. And I think that uh, a Mage the Ascension game where we work in kind of how to play because it's one of the hardest games, I think, to run. So it might be cool to use Mage the Ascension as an example of how to run a game because there's so many weird little things about it that make it tricky. Um, that's just an idea off the top of my head. My producers and I haven't talked about it yet, but that's maybe where you'll see it is in some additional content, subscriber content possibly. Um, any plans for another fan episode of VOP? Yeah, so that's a great question. Um, uh, here's the other thing we've been talking about, Stoicism and Hobbits. We've been talking about the fact that the city has all these factions, right? Factions. All these Camarilla factions, a couple independent factions, and then our little band of Anarchs. So Ross, uh, Ashley, and Thomas, they control the Anarchs in our game. What if we let our viewers and our subscribers control the other factions in our city in a sort of uh, faction turn kind of way, like you might find in Stars Without Number. So that's another thing I'm going to go ahead and hint at, wink, wink, nudge, nudge, uh, say that might be subscriber content coming soon. The ability to uh, kind of have little teams in the chat kind of controlling the Toreador, the, uh, you know, the Tremere, uh, the, you know, what's left of the blood dance coterie. What are they doing? You guys might be able to decide. So that's another thing I'll kind of hint at. Uh, we we want to get this all out for you as soon as we can, but um, we are only so many people and we only have so much time in the day, but the more people that subscribe, the more, you know, this thing gains momentum and we're able to devote more time to it. So um, I'm not trying to give you the hard sell, but that's the reality of it. Uh, We can get more content out there if we have more people following us, subscribing and watching. Uh, What do you believe is the true origin of vampires in the vampire setting? Wow, that would really be giving it away, wouldn't it? Uh, Do I believe that, you know, this is always the conversation that comes up in vampire. Is is it really a a Cain? Is Cain the real original uh, vampire? Um, is all that stuff real or is it a myth? Um, well, I wanted to bring some of it in. And the reason I wanted to bring it into the game, whether I believe it's true or not in my setting, is because I think that there are characters in this setting that believe it. I think that Mary, who's a very important NPC right now, definitely believes it. And her beliefs are going to really steer these Anarchs or cause friction within them. Um, and we also hadn't done dealt with any of the deep sort of mystical metaphysic history of the vampire world in our game at all. We'd, we'd spent like 20 episodes kind of running around and dealing with the night to night uh, errands of, of being a Camarilla uh, soldier. So I wanted to bring that stuff in. So that's why you're hearing about it now. Whether I believe it's true or not, I, I, I mean, I kind of side with the book like. There's all kinds of um, theories about where vampires come from. And um, I do not. So I'm going to say I do not necessarily believe that Cain is real. The Book of Nod is the God's honest truth and all of that stuff. I think that uh, the truth is probably very complicated and lost to aeons of history. I know they're immortal, but... uh, it's really hard to learn anything about the time period right as people started to build cities and, and become uh, civilized groups. So um, that's I'm, I'm sorry I'm not answering your question, but I will say that it, I, what I will say is this. I do not think that I am not like a – and Cain was the first vampire, and the Book of Nod is uh, literally true. That's, that's what I am not as a storyteller or as I create this series. 
Okay. Uh, that sort of answered it. Uh, does anybody else have anything to say? That might be it, right? Okay, great. Well, uh, we really appreciate you guys joining us here on our new day and time. Uh, we love doing this show for you, and we're going to do it uh, as long as we can. Until next time, hashtag get pink, and we'll see you next Sunday.